Hey guys, so today I'm going to give a simple example of a DUP, which is daily undulating periodization, or it can also be daily undulating programming. In a second, I'll talk a little bit about what the differences of those might be. Uh, this will hopefully be a series, this being part one, where we'll just lay out a very basic structure. Uh, and then as we continue to go on, we'll start to fill in with uh, upper body, accessory movements, um, maybe some conditioning, so on and so on. And hopefully by the end, really have uh, a full plan uh, that you guys can tweak and make to your own. So uh, I mentioned uh, programming versus periodization. Uh, Mike Zordos has a very good explanation of this, but periodization is really just a uh, more of a planning technique uh, or something that happens across an annual plan, multiple macro cycles, et cetera, et cetera. Sorry about that. I thought I'd turn them off. Um, and programming is something that is uh, week or microcycle, so within your week or day to day. Um, so in terms of periodization, uh, what you'll see is on the side here, and you just see these reps, is that we're going from higher volumes, so more sets and more reps, to lower volumes, um, less sets, less reps, heavier weights, okay? And the, so you can see the intensity increase down here, and volume is the highest with intensity the lowest up here. Um, in terms of programming, that's what we'll actually do across our week. So there's day one, day two, day, day three. DUP um, can mean a couple of things, um, but uh, a very basic outline and what they found that works best in literature um, is this setup of hypertrophy, power, strength. Now, based on what you've read before, you may have seen DUP meaning is we train everything at the same time. You know, you may have 15, 10s, and 2s all at the same time. Uh, but really, in practice, DUP works best when um, you're following that general trend of periodization. So even though we have a little bit of each um, uh, quality here, so you have mainly uh, hypertrophy and then some strength, it's still your highest volumes working down to your lowest volumes and lowest intensities working to your highest intensities. Uh, and uh, so a good setup is this hypertrophy power strength across the week. Hypertrophy being first because it's a Monday and it's your most fatiguing and uh, muscle damage happening. And so by the time you get back to it, you're ready to go again. And then this power second because it potentiates the strength on the third day. Now, this wouldn't be like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This would be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday kind of setup. There would be uh, at least some rest between these sessions. But again, this power potentiates the strength day. And what potentiates mean is it adds to and increases the output of what you would do here. It also serves as somewhat of a light technique session day, allows you to move the bar fast so that when you go to this, you're primed for those uh, heavier weights. And then you can see that that similar structure happens throughout each cycle, even as the weights get heavier uh, and the volume gets lower. So you still have here more of your higher volume day and then um, uh, your power day and then your strength day. And again, higher volume, more power, strength. Now, some of these percentage you can see are getting pretty high here. Uh, but the idea would be that as you're moving down throughout these cycles, you'd be getting stronger. So uh, even though this is, you know, 10 by 2 at 92 and a half percent, which would seem very heavy for 10 doubles, uh, you're getting stronger. And we're always keeping in mind these RPE ranges here. So this 92 and a half may realistically not be um, what if you were just to today take your 1RM and get that percentage off of. But again, you're, and you're always keeping in mind these RPEs. So in this work capacity hypertrophy phase, you'd want the RPEs to be somewhere from five to eight. Um, and I won't go into exactly what RPE means. There's enough information on there out there now that you guys should be able to find uh, that's really well written. Um, but in your work capacity hypertrophy phase, staying you know farther from failure uh, because the most important thing you can accrue in this phase is volume. And the high, the closer that you get the failure, the harder it is to then accumulate more volume there. So there's a proxy for hypertrophy, which is anywhere um, from one to four to failure, which would correlate to this five to eight. And across a week here up in this hypertrophy phase, you may um, 
add some sets. So you may start by four, four by eight, but end with six by eight. Uh, and uh, you'd add a little bit of weight, uh, but we have these reps writ written here. However, your sets may look like, in this four by eight, may look like eight, eight, seven, six. Because if you approach failure, if you try to aim for eight reps each time, you may end up exceeding this RPE, and that would be not be a good thing because it would accrue too much fatigue for the following weeks. And again, make you suffer the amount of volume that you could otherwise um, build throughout the weeks. Um, that would apply more to this day and less to these days here. Now, when you move to, into a strength phase, things would get heavier. Volume would be less important, so you might leave these sets and reps the same, but increase weight. And then again here, uh, volume less important, um, strength uh, increasing intensity, and you would leave the sets and reps the same, increase the weight on the bar. Uh, but again, always keeping in mind these RPEs. If you're starting to exceed these RPEs with these phases, you would likely do a little bit less reps there, or you may add more weight than you're thinking if the, if it's feeling especially light. So uh, DUP in itself uh, doesn't have anything necessarily special. It just really serves as a fatigue management, um, uh, serves to just help with fatigue management. It allows you to uh, go across the week and accrue enough volume in these different rep ranges without exceeding what you can recover from and we talked about the potentiation. We talked about the transition of volume to intensity in a, in a periodized plan. We talked about this RPE, talked about why hypertrophy would be first and that you may add some sets there. Uh, now, um, when I was talking about adding the sets and adding reps, you could then think about more sports specificity or what's important for the sport I'm in. Uh, so a bodybuilder may... Uh, even have different, this is more of a powerlifter's plan. A bodybuilder may have, um, instead of uh, this 864, he may or she may look something like um, 1286 because uh, they're looking to accrue more volume in that um, 6 to 12 or even 15 rep range. Uh, and then we talked about periodization versus programming. Another important thing to add in here is this volume landmark. So across all of these phases, you'd want to um, keep track of the amount of hard sets that you're um, able to recover from to where this eventually could be like you're starting week one with a six by eight. Now, for the volume landmarks, I would recommend going to check out Renaissance Periodization for a more in-depth explanation on that. Uh, but the, the very uh, basic explanation is there's a certain amount of volume that you can handle and recover from. And um, you need to be able to find the maximal recoverable volume and also uh, the minimum effective volume of what is beneficial for your progress. Uh, because within that range is where you're best going to adapt. And if you're constantly exceeding what you can recover from, the MRFE, you're not adapting well, you're just trying to recover. But if you're not actually pushing enough um, uh, to, to cause stress and fatigue, then nothing's happening as well. So uh, hopefully this was a good first explanation. Uh, I will try to go much more in depth as we continue to build this uh, video series out. Uh, I just wanted to have a quick DUP part one explanation of how you might set up the block, how would it look across cycles, um, and then some simple considerations in terms of RPE and volume. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, for a lot more resources on this, I would look out uh, Mass Monthly Application and Strength Sports, which is done by Mike Zordos, Eric Helms, and Greg Knuckles. Uh, they have some great videos on there explaining this. Uh, Juggernaut Training Systems has some good um, articles and videos on the periodization and programming stuff, and also how you might set this up throughout a week. Uh, and then Mike Tashir has a, a bunch of stuff on RPE as well. But all those guys are really good resources um, to go to and where I'm drawing a lot of this information from. And if you felt like I left a lot out in this, uh, definitely add, add some questions to the comment box, send them in. And like I said, we will start uh, building this more thoroughly as we go on and hopefully answering those. All right. See you guys.